Blender and Maya are two of the best 3D packages that artists use today. Both of them can be great for a lot of different purposes, but they also have different things to offer depending on what you want to do. Maya is industry standard in many industries such as VFX, animation, and game development. But Blender is also a software that is growing fast lately and becoming a weapon of choice for many 3D artists. In this video, we will take a look at both of these 3D packages and what they have to offer. Modeling after the injury of Maya 2014, some very powerful modeling tools have been added to the software, which gave it a better workflow and more efficient modeling that will allow you to create complex models easily. If you want to be in game development or animation, learning to model in Maya is a good option because you will be using it to work in the industry. Blender has been developed a lot in the last decade with a variety of new features, especially with the new releases, which made it competitive when it comes to 3D modeling. It has a comprehensive array of modeling tools that can help you for creating, transforming, and editing your models. In addition to Blender's high competence in terms of poly modeling, it gives modelers the ability to sculpt, which is a fantastic feature that most 3D packages don't have, because artists that use them usually use specialized sculpting software such as ZBrush. Also, what is interesting about modeling in Blender is the add-ons that you can use to create cool and complicated mechanical pieces and detailed hard surface models. Overall, in terms of modeling, I would say that both are good, but Blender has the upper hand due to the tools it offers, especially in terms of sculpting. Rendering When it comes to rendering, you can expect Maya to have a strong render engine, which is Arnold at the time being, and it is included with the default installation of Maya. Arnold is a fast, memory-efficient, and scalable physically-based ray tracer, and it supports interactive rendering from the interface. This render engine was developed by a company called Solid Angle, and later it was bought by Autodesk in 2016. Before having Arnold, Maya did not really have a good render engine that can be relied on to create high-quality renders effectively and with high degrees of efficiency. Also, there are a lot of people using external render engines that don't come with Maya, like V-Ray, Redshift, and Octane Render, just to name a few. These render engines are great, and they can offer a lot to artists and studios in many industries such as architectural visualization, VFX, and animation. When it comes to rendering in Blender, you can basically expect to have two different render engines for two different purposes, because we have Cycles and Eevee. Cycles is Blender's physically based path tracer for production rendering, and generally speaking to render high quality images with much more efficiency as possible. It is designed to provide physically based results with artistic control and flexible shading nodes for production needs. Eevee is also a render engine that ships with Blender, but it serves a different purpose than Cycles, because it is a real-time render engine built using OpenGL focused on speed and interactivity, in the same time achieving the goal of rendering PBR materials. Eevee can be used interactively in the 3D viewport, but also it can produce high-quality final renders. Eevee materials are created using the same render nodes as Cycles, making it easy to render existing scenes. This makes Eevee work great to preview materials in real time, like for example when we use it to preview architectural visualization scenes. Unlike Cycle, Eevee is not a ray trace render engine. Instead of computing each ray of light, Eevee uses a process called rasterization. While Eevee is designed to use PBR principles, it is not perfect and Cycles will always provide more physically accurate renders, because Eevee uses rasterization and it has a large set of limitations. In addition to having Cycles and Eevee at your disposal when using Blender, you also have the option to use third-party add-ons like Octane, Pixar RenderMan, and V-Ray. When it comes to rendering, Maya and Blender both have a great render engines, but Blender's real-time render engine Eevee is very strong compared to Arnold real-time render engine capabilities that were added recently by Autodesk. I'm not saying that Arnold's real-time capabilities are bad, but Eevee is better generally speaking. Animation Maya stands out when it comes to animation because of its library of animation tools, that's why it is used by many industries that rely on animation, such as video game development and VFX. Many studios use Maya as a critical piece of their production pipeline for rigging and animation, and the animation experience it provides makes it possible to work on difficult and complex projects. When it comes to rigging, Maya has excellent rigging tools with some nice built-in rigs that can be quickly applied to your models. 
even the vanilla tools in Maya are good, often professionals and studios develop their own tools for creating complex rigs. That's why you need the working knowledge of Maya's scripting languages. Blender, on the other hand, has seen a lot of growth over the years when it comes to animation because it was developed further by the Blender team to rise up to the needs of the animation team that worked on the short films created by the Blender Institute. Blender allows artists to turn their steel characters into animations, whether it is a simple keyframing or complex walk cycles. It can be used to work on different animation projects, whether it be character animation, rigid body animation, or even motion graphics, which is a very important part of the advertising industry. It also offers a good set of tools when it comes to rigging for character preparation for animation. You can use built-in add-ons to allow you to rig your characters easily and faster, and if you have enough experience, you can build your own complex rigs. In addition to that, Blender is one of the few 3D software that has the ability to draw and create 2D animations. This is possible in Blender using the Grease Pencil tool, which is a system that was created years ago and it became much better lately. The Grease Pencil is basically a particle of type of Blender objects that allows you to draw in the 3D space. It can be used to make traditional 2D animation, cutout animation, motion graphics, or use it as a storyboard tool, among other things. The Grease Pencil will open the door for navigating new possibilities using Blender. It was actually used to create a short 2D film called Hero, which was created completely using the Grease Pencil tool. So in terms of animation, Maya and Blender are both great, but Maya has the upper hand here because it has a lot of tools and resources and it is heavily relied on by professionals and studios, which made it a weapon of choice for a lot of animators, but if you are not interested in working in the industry, you can still use Blender. Visual Effects In terms of visual effects, Maya is very strong because it fulfills the needs of many studios and professional artists working in the industry. Even though Maya had in the past some limitations compared to the 3D software leading the industry of visual effects, now it has pretty much everything needed for this type of work, especially with what Autodesk added to it in the last decade from the new and better cloth and hair simulation tools such as Ancloth, which is an extremely powerful cloth engine that you should learn as a Maya user. Ancloth has the flexibility to be used to simulate different types of objects. For instance, it can be great for simulating lava or concrete being poured, which is another application for it. Also, we have Bifrost, which is a simulation system for high-quality liquid and fluid effects using Flip Solver. You can generate liquids and have them fall from emitters under gravity, interact with colliders to direct the flow and create splashes, and much more. Bifrost was used for some of the most iconic movies, such as Avatar. In addition to that, other powerful plugins can be used also with Maya, such as Phoenix FD, FumeFX, Ziva VFX, and so on. When it comes to effect, Blender has a good particle system that can be used to create high-quality visual effects like fire, smoke, dust, blizzards, and so on, as we have it done in the Man in the High Castle show, in which the VFX was created by Barnstone VFX, and they actually have integrated Blender in their pipeline. Just to be fair, I believe that other than Houdini, the other software that are used in the industry for film and VFX use plugins and add-ons, in addition to the tools that come originally with these 3D packages to do a lot of effects like fire, smoke, fluids, and so on. They use powerful plugins such as FumeFX, Phoenix FD, Krakatoa, Thinking Particles, and so on. And the best developers don't make their add-ons available for Blender because of its open source nature and the GPL license, which makes the source code for their tools available for other users. But Blender right now has a good particle system that can be used for VFX nonetheless, in addition to good simulation add-ons such as Flip Fluids. Also, Blender has a very robust cloth simulation system that can be used to make cloth, flags, banners, and so on. In addition to that, there are some Blender add-ons that can make creating cloth easier and faster, similar to what we can find in Marvelous Designer. Blender has also motion tracking tools that are good enough to create professional camera tracking for VFX shots. It was actually developed further to work on some of the short films that were created using Blender. And what makes Blender unique compared to the 3D packages is the fact that it is also able to do compositing, but to be honest, studios for the most part use Nuke, which is a good compositing software. Even Barstone VFX that are famous for using Blender 
are actually using Nuke for their composition work because it is much better. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.